Hello, Maureen here today. I'm introducing Dr. Beata Ritz at uh, UCLA, having given a, a speech on the registry here in California to gather Parkinson's patients to, to find out about the environmental effect of uh, pesticides on our disease. Hi, doctor. Hi. Um, a little bit about the study in D Denmark, because they have money, is that right? Well, no, the Danes, uh, it's not about money in Denmark. It's actually about trust in their government. And the Danish have decided that they can trust the government, and they have instituted electronic medical records since the first time they used a computer in Denmark, 1977. And so since 1977, all hospitals have electronic records. They are reporting um, diagnoses to the state, to this registry, so that we have an opportunity to identify anyone who was ever medically seen in a hospital or outpatient clinic with a certain disease. So we can find these people. Not only can we find them, we are also allowed as researchers to apply to these secure electronic records to then review the records and um, see whether the patients with Parkinson's also have more other diseases prior to Parkinson's or less other diseases, or whether they took a certain medication for years prior to coming down with Parkinson's. Yes, I have a, very much, uh, a lot of antidepressants in the 90s, for right, example. Right. So you could look whether they take more statins or more anti-inflammatories or less anti-inflammatories than others who don't come with, down with Parkinson's. So it's just a wealth of data that in Denmark you're actually by law, when you're a researcher, you apply to the state to access this um, database in a very secure manner. It's all, the data is kept in Denmark, but I can access it from the US. Um, it's anonymized, I don't have names, but the data can link through a code so that the record of one patient is always the record of one patient, cool. but I don't know who it is, right? Uh -huh. And then I can see whether this patient took anti-inflammatories, took statins, when they got Parkinson's, when they have their Parkinson's diagnosis, how they were treated, and what their risk is to then be hospitalized again, or what their risk is to die earlier or not to die earlier, wow. or to have dementia or depression being treated as well. So I can look at a whole combination of factors that are already there in records um, noted by health health care providers, physicians, in a very secure manner. And does this, excuse me, include uh, uh, genes? For example, my mother uh, died with Parkinson's uh, 21 years ago. No, this does not include genes because the Danes are not collecting genetic information on their population. However, they allow you to then access the names of these patients in a secure manner, write a letter and call these patients and ask the patients to provide a sample, a blood sample. And that's what we did and 1,700 patients accepted and we now have actually genetic data for 1,700 patients. 1,700, that's more we get at UCLA uh, here. I was yes. part of a study, I think there were five of us. Yes, exactly. Studies in the U.S. are small. If you get 100 patients, it's a big study. Yes. Right? And we have now a study in Denmark with 1,700 patients. Those happy Danes. Yes. <laughs> riding their bikes full of right. serotonin, willing to cooperate. Right. Yeah. I mean, even in Denmark, cooperation uh, goes down for research, unfortunately. It seems to be a Western attitude to not want to uh, do something for their community as much as, you know, even 10 years ago. My Danish colleagues are actually working at the Cancer Society, and they always told me, oh, we have 80% uh, enrollment, you know, everybody we asked, 80% says yes, and this time around it was 60%. So wow. even, even their participation is going down, but... Even here, I think, I mean, the, the study that was uh, involved a number of PET scans and MRIs and psychological study, and uh, there were only a few handful, and she, I think she wanted 7,000 people. Yeah, and she got five? Well, around that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, I mean, at least in Denmark, we had 1,700 patients wow. signing up. But, you rock. Um, I'm, very, uh, I'm very lucky to have now access to this wonderful database and yeah. explore causes of Parkinson's and ho hopefully find a cure, right? Thank you. Yes, great. Uh, you. We're very lucky to have you here in the United States. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Ritz, thank you. See you guys later. Bye. Good. <laughs> thank you very much. That's perfect. Four, four minutes. Oh, I have to turn it off.